Hi there. Welcome to my video where I'm going to be showing you how I fuel proof my planes, the engine bay and around the fuel tank. Now this is a really simple method that, that I find works really well for me. If you've been following my build of this uh, 40 inch flying wing you'll know it's ready to have the fuel tank area uh, fuel proofed. So uh, this is what we're going to be doing. Now a lot of ARFs and things like that that you buy are not fuel proofed and I think fuel proofing is essential so whether you're building your own or whether you're buying an ARF it needs, in my opinion, it needs fuel proofing. If not, if you have a fuel leak or just the general oil that's coming from your engine while it's operating you're going to have that oil and fuel soaking into the balsa and eventually it will ruin the plane and it could cause structural failure while the plane's flying around as that balsa gets soggy and degrades. So fuel proofing in my mind is really important and it's really simple and quick to do. So anyway, I will show you what I'm going to do to fuel proof this. Right, well first, the materials and the things that we're going to need. I'm going to be using some 95% ethanol. Now it doesn't have to be 95%, the higher the, the percentage the better, but I have used 70% ethanol in the past and that works fine. But the higher the percentage, the less uh, water the better. So we've got our ethanol, we've got a mixing cup and a, a stirrer. We've also got, I've also got a small uh, cup and the reason I'm going to use that is that once I've actually done this, my paintbrush, which I'm quite fond of and I've used lots of times for fuel proofing, I'm going to wash out. And if you wash it out with a little bit of ethanol, which costs very little, you save your brush. And I know brushes can be cheap and disposable, but I think we should, uh, we should reuse our, our brushes when we can. So I'm going to wash that out and it's very effective. And the main component that goes with the alcohol is some 30 minute epoxy. Now I'm using this Zap epoxy, 30 minute epoxy. And you, I'm not sure whether you can do this with the 15 minute or the five. I only ever do it with the 30. And it doesn't, once you've mixed it with the alcohol, it tends to go off a lot quicker. It certainly doesn't last 30 minutes. So I suspect if you use something like the 5 minute epoxy, it will set really quickly. I, I, I'm not sure. My advice, 30 minute epoxy. And it, of course it doesn't have to be this brand, it can be any brand, but this is what I use. Now, one of the things I struggle with is always deciding how much to mix up. Because once you start adding the alcohol, it, it, it's a little bit more, it, it sort of expands what you've got. Um, and you want enough to complete the job. So what I'm going to use, I'm probably going to put about three or four grams of epoxy uh, of each, each one. So about six, seven, eight grams of epoxy in total. And I'm going to use these set of balances. These are my kitchen scales, which I absolutely love. They are extremely reliable and accurate. So I'm going to set that to zero. And then I'm, oh, something else just before we start. Uh, I have a, a small plastic pipette because when we add the alcohol to the epoxy we want to add such a small amount. If we add too much it's just going to be like water. It wants to be, it, it wants to be a, a, a nice brushable consistency but not too thin. So I'm going to add the, uh, the hardener first, not that that makes any difference at all. Okay, I've added three grams of the hardener and now I'm going to add three grams of the resin. I don't normally weigh epoxy if I'm doing just little bits, but when I'm doing quite a large quantity like this, I, uh, I quite like to uh, uh, measure it out. Now, I'm just going to be mixing that first to get that just nicely mixed. 
Okay. Right, now we've got that mixed. And I'm going to be adding a few drops of ethanol through my pipette. And I'll show you, just move the wing so I don't drip on that. I'm just going to add a few, hopefully you can see that, just one, two, three, just a little bit of ethanol there. And I'm now going to be mixing that up. Right, I'm going to add a little bit more. is getting runnier now. If you use a lower percentage ethanol then it goes a little bit cloudy because of the water in it but if you use the 95% it doesn't. Now this is quite thin but I'm going to add just a little drop more. So at this point I look at it and think gosh have I uh, mixed enough? <laughs> I wish I'd put an extra couple of grams of uh, of uh, resin in there but I think this will be fine and we have to remember that this is going to be adding weight to the uh, to the model. Now you can see now it's it's quite runny but it's not it's not really pourable. That is how I am going to be using it. Right and I've got a little bit of tissue because ultimately I will get it on my hands. I'm also working on a little bit of acetate here like the cover models with simply because I don't want to uh, to be getting it on my cutting mats if I can avoid it. So now if I turn my model around and all we need to do is start brushing this in. Oops, just spilled a bit there. Brushing this into the engine bag. And just give it a good liberal coating. We can always give it a second coat and if we haven't got enough epoxy we can always come back and apply another uh, you know more to, to areas it's not it's not a one one hit wonder this it's it's something we can come back to so right well I'm gonna get on and brush this rather than you watching me uh, do it and uh, and we'll come back and have a look when it's uh, when it's done but I'm just brushing it in like I was giving it a coat of paint just nice it doesn't need to be thick right well I've, right, well, I've now got that uh, coated with a lovely coat of epoxy and I had just about the right amount now I'm going to wash my brush out and I'm actually, rather than using this other pot, I'm going to use it in this and then I can reuse this container as well. It takes very little um, of the alcohol to clean your brush out. So I'm going to clean my brush now and then we'll come back and have a quick look when this has dried. I've done the inside of the compartment but I haven't done the engine mounts and around uh, this front area. So, I, and the, the strengthener in there. So I'm going to come back and do that once this has dried so I can be holding it better without getting the epoxy on my hands and then we'll have a look at the finished item. Right, well I've now got the radio compartment and the fuel tank area as well as the engine mounts here at the front fuel proofed, it's dried and it's given a really good covering. I don't think it's needed to give it a second coating so I won't be bothering. Uh, the brush is cleaned, ready to be used again, as are, are my containers. Why not use things if we can, rather than, than just throwing them away disposable? As you can see, this has been a really simple, quick, easy way to fuel-proof our planes in those critical areas where the fuel could soak in. This was something that I wasn't sure about when I first started in the hobby. How should I be doing this? Am I doing it the right way? And it's surprising, I've had quite a few comments in my build series with people saying, you know, how do you feel proof it? What's the best way? So I thought I would do this quick video and if it helps somebody, 
that's great. So I hope this has helped you. I hope you've enjoyed it. And thanks very much for watching.